Good evening, family and friends, and welcome to the Glen Haven United Methodist Church New Year's Eve service as we come together to lift up the name of Jesus on this last day of 2022. We come together to praise God for the blessings that has already been bestowed upon us. Will you please join me in a word of prayer? We praise and thank you, O oh God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ, you create the whole world. Through Christ, you preserved it. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of our minds and our bodies. Bless us on this last day and last evening in 2022. I pray that your spirit fall fresh upon each and every one that is looking and listening over the live stream as we come together to praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Can't fail. 
church our new testament reading will be coming from matthew 25 verses 31 through 46 when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him then he will sit on his glorious throne all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will, sit, he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't take me in. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. Sick, in, sick and in prison and you didn't take care of me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or without clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good evening. Our Old Testament scripture comes from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses one through 13. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. Amen.
O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, thy saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received its frame. From everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. Time like an ever-rolling stream Bears all its sons away They fly forgotten as a dream Dies at the opening day Our God, our help in ages past our hope for years to come. Be thou our guide while life shall last and our eternal home. This year has been difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people went home to glory. God has called family and friends home. And we will truly miss them. But in this particular time, in this prayer moment, we will continue to lift up all those names that are on our prayer list, the names that are on the Glen Haven prayer list, we will remember them. The names are on the North Georgia Conference prayer list. We remember them. And all over the world, we remember and pray for the concerns and the love and the restoration of God's people. We celebrate many, many things. New birth. We have a new bishop. We celebrate and miss and we'll miss the old bishop that's going out. But we thank God for all of those wonderful people that have been laid upon our heart as we continue to be prayer and intercessory prayer for people all over the world. Let's prepare our hearts and minds to go before the throne of grace in prayer. Dear God, thank you for helping us to make it through this difficult year. Thank you for carrying us through the uncertainty of deep waters and the flames of trials of life and the pain of hard losses. We are constantly aware of how much we need you, great God, your grace and your strength and your power working through us each and every day, even through our toughest days. Great God, help us to end this year with a thankful heart and start the new year with a peace and faith. Help us, dear God, to release the bitterness and frustration of the past year. Let us move into the next year knowing that you love us and that you care for us and that you want the best for us. We pray that the new year will be focused on healing ourselves through repentance and renewing our minds. God, we pray, dear God, that we know that we are never alone, yet you are the great Emmanuel, that you are with us each and every day. God, we pray that you bring the light of hope into all the world's hearts, into our homes. God, help us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And Father, we ask for your wisdom, and we ask you for strength and power to be constant with us daily. 
We ask, oh God, that you will help us to become strong and courageous down the roads of life and give us the ability to do what you will have us to do and give us the strength, God, to move forward in the next year. God, we pray that you would keep us protected, our families protected, our children protected, our friends protected. Protect us from the snares and the traps of the enemy. God, we pray that you will whisper in our ear when we need to run away from destruction and disaster. We pray that you will whisper in our hearts that we need to learn to love one another. We pray, dear God, for your protection, for the covering of your blood, dear God, over everyone, over the live stream and in the world. We ask you, dear God, for your hand to cover us and keep us distance from the enemy's intent and from the barriers he may try to set before us. We ask you, dear God, to give us spiritual discernment and insight, dear God. God, we pray, dear God, for the family of Glen Haven Methodist Church. We pray for everyone that's on the prayer list that you would bless them and strengthen them and heal them in a special way. We pray for everyone over the North Georgia Conference list, dear God, that you would pray and that you would heal them in a special way. God, we ask for complete healing and restoration over everyone in this world that's going through a difficult time on this last day of the year. And God, help us to be a blessing to others. Help us to launch out into the deep. Help us to step out on faith, God. Help us to remember that, dear God, that in Christ all things are new and old are pass away. Help us let the old stay in the past. Bless us, God, to be a blessing to others. Help us, God, to be more like Jesus Christ. It's in a powerful name, the most powerful name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto come out of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight God you're my strength you're my rock and my redeemer in Jesus name I only pray amen my brothers and sisters as we prepare for a new year Lot, lots of people have went through difficult times in year 2022. And the enemy will have you to think that nothing will ever get any better. The enemy will have you frightened to even move in any type of direction. But I stopped by to tell you that the words from the enemy is a lie. We all have heard the phrase, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And however we all know what it is like to fear something or someone, we maybe experience that every now and then. But fear is our mind's reaction to a perceived threat, which comes in all shapes and all sizes, and fear affects people differently. As a matter of fact, the Bible mentions two specific types of fear. The first type of fear is beneficial and it is to be encouraged. The second type is a detriment and it is to be overcome. The first type of fear is the fear of the Lord. The writer of Psalms 111 states that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And this type of fear does not necessarily mean that being afraid of something, it is instead it's a, a reverence of God and awe of God, and this fear is beneficial. But the second type of fear is mentioned in the Bible. And this fear is not beneficial. As a matter of fact, it's called the spirit of fear. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear. A spirit of fearfulness is not what God intended for his people. As a matter of fact, the Bible commands us to fear not. The writer of Isaiah says, don't fear for I am with you. Don't be afraid for I am your God. And my brothers and sisters, God knows every trial, every hardship, and every crisis lurking as you go into the year 2023. And nothing will take God by surprise. No pandemic, no problems, no threat to the world peace will upset the plans that God has for you. So I submit to you this evening, as we close out year 2022, that 
the title of this message is Nothing to Fear Next Year. You have nothing, my brothers and sisters, to fear next year. And I submit to you several things from the word that we can glean from to help you navigate your life through 2023. The first topic that we can glean from as we have nothing to fear next year is that we need to learn, my brothers and sisters, to keep trusting in God. That's the starting point. The title of Psalms 56 tells us, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. I put my trust in God, so I will not be afraid. In other words, the main reason we should trust God is because God is worthy of our trust. Unlike men, God never lies. And God has always fulfilled his purpose in his children's lives. As a matter of fact, Solomon, one of the wisest kings, he also wrote that we should trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not lean on to our own understanding. In all our way, we should acknowledge God, and God will direct our path. You know, most of us have faced disappointment, wouldn't you agree? Which have taught us really to only depend on ourselves, but that's no way to be. But living the life God has called us means that we need to unlearn that lesson and learn to lean on the promises of God. And I know, I know 2022 has been challenging. And I know sometimes it's hard to believe when everything is going crazy in your life. But King Solomon's father David, who another was a wise man, he said, and he wrote in Psalm 56 and, 30, 56 and 3 through 4, that I will put my trust in you, and I will not be afraid with what man can do to me. In other words, we need to put our trust in God and not put our trust in people, places, and things. Sometimes all we need to do is just trust God and nobody else. In other words, the writer says that I will trust in God and I am not afraid what people can do to me. In other words, how much harm can a person really do to you? And yes, we've seen it in the world. We've seen pain being inflicted. We've seen people suffering from pain and suffering and even death. But guess what? Guess what? Listen to this. No one person can rob us of our soul's future. No one can take snatch us out of the loving hands of God. The worst thing anybody can do is reject the love of God through Jesus Christ. That's the worst thing we can do. But Jesus, again, he confirms what David and Solomon said. Jesus said, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. That's good news right there. So no matter how much what you do to me, you can't harm me because I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I have been in some difficult situations, my brothers and sisters. I have been. You know, people can be so mean, and they can be. I've been cursed out. I've even been threatened. I've even been hit by people. People can be so mean, but because I trusted God, God helped me and saw me through that painful situation. I could have retaliated back, but I trusted in God and did what Jesus said. I turned the other cheek. That's why I can agree with the psalm writer and said in Isaiah 41, 
Do not fear, for I am with you even in that situation. I knew God was with me in that difficult situation. That's why I can agree with the songwriter when he wrote, I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust God. I had to trust God in that difficult situation. And I, wouldn't, I didn't fear what man could do to me. My brothers and sisters, we need to keep trusting God in the year 2023. The next thing I submit to you is that we need to fight the temptation of fear. We need to fight the temptation of fear. You know, you have the war in Ukraine and they're fighting a physical war, but my brothers and sisters, we fight spiritual battles. And the enemy's tactic is to promote fear in our lives. In other words, even with that, God has given us a spiritual armor of grace to wage war and to come through the war successful. It's called the shield of faith. Paul said it, said it so beautifully. The shield of faith which you have which keeps the fiery darts of the evil one. In other words, when we have the shield of faith in front of us, we can fray the obstacles that tend to have us fearful or frightened to move forward. Because when you have the shield of faith, you're able to move forward in battle instead of moving backwards. This type of faith overcomes fear when you are leaning on and trusting in the power of God. You know, if you read and watch the news, it seems like there are so many things going on and the war and housing prices going up and the cost of food prices going up and losing your job or either keep finding a job and the enemy kind of make you scared that Nothing ever good is going to happen, but he is a lie. And we can walk in the next year with God's powerful hand upon us. And we should not let fear hold us back, no matter what. And that's why I can agree with Paul Rowe. He said, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. We are marching to God through our difficulties with power. That's why I had to learn for myself. That's why I had to learn to trust in an all-powerful, all-wise, all-knowing, all-ever-present God. Because God has good intentions for all of us. But we got to put on the full armor of God, the shield of faith, and carry the sword of the Spirit next year. As we carry the sword of the spirit, we're able to fight through obstacles that says you will not. But God's word said, yes, you will. Speaking of trusting God, I'm reminded of a story about a friend one day and one evening him and his seven-year-old son, they were returning from shopping for a car, and, and all of a sudden, they decided to turn down a side road that had never been traveled on before because they were trying to avoid traffic. And as they rounded the bend, the dad noticed that his son in the back seat was very quiet. Maybe he was a little fearful, you know, you know, after riding down the street and it was dark. And the daddy was curious. He was wondering why he didn't say anything because most of the time when he's going down a street he don't recognize, he become afraid. And he usually is afraid, but the father asked his son, Are you afraid that we're going down this highway and, and I know you didn't recognize 
the direction we're going, are you afraid, my son? And the son said, well, as long as you know where we are going, I don't have to be afraid. That spoke volumes about why we should trust in our Heavenly Father when we don't know where our spiritual journey leads us. There's no need for us to be afraid because God is always in the driver's seat of our lives. In other words, God already knows the direction we need to go in 2023. That's why we should always trust in God and not lean on our own understanding. Not only we are to keep trusting God and not only we are to put on the full armor of God and to not fear, but we need to remember who holds the future in the palm of his hand. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. That's it right there. That's it. We need to stop worrying about tomorrow. Because the Lord knows we face many circumstances and situations that can cause us anxiety because we live in a fallen world. But the word commands us to stop worrying about tomorrow. There are some nuggets I would like to put in place to help you to not to worry about tomorrow and know who holds the future in the palm of his hand. Number one, we should continue to pray. We should continue to push through, pray until something happens. The writer of Philippians, Paul says, that, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. In other words, we need to be praying more and more each and every day as we go into year 2023. Not only we are to pray about everything, we need to learn to rely on God's grace. As a matter of fact, we need to learn, like I said a while back in one of my sermons, we need to learn to forgive ourselves. We need to learn to forgive others. We need to rely on God's grace. Apostle Paul talked about, about being um, a thorn in his flesh. Nobody altogether know, do not know what Paul's thorn in the flesh is, but Paul knows and the Lord knows. And I guarantee you some of us coming, coming out of 2022, there's some things in the flesh that needs to be worked on. And as some things need to be worked on, Paul says, therefore I will not boast all the more glad about my weakness. God knows that you're weak. God knows that you struggle. But we need to lay everything at the foot of the cross in prayer. And when problems pre-exist, we need to learn to rely on the power of God. Because like Paul said, I am made strong even in my weakness. God's grace gave Paul the ability to see how the Lord will be glorified even in his infirmities. That is why, for Christ's sake, he said, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, and in difficulty. For when I am weak, God is strong. We need to learn to forgive ourselves as we go into 2023. We need to learn to let go and let God. We need to learn to eradicate the worries about tomorrow. We need to put it in the all-forgiving, loving hands of God. We also need to learn to discipline our mind. After praying and receiving God's peace, we must discipline our mind. And that Paul writes again in Philippians 4. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one thing we need to do to fix our minds on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable. 
And he says that we need to think about these things which are praiseworthy. In other words, it is hard to worry when our thoughts are centered on God's true and faithful promises. In other words, let go and let God. Because when you're undisciplined in your thinking, you begin to worry. You can't be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we need to learn to be disciplined in our thinking as we go into year 2023. We also should take action. Do something. The things you thought about doing in 22, 2022 you didn't do, now's the time to start doing in 2023. In other words, we can't be truly dedicated to God if we, we're devoted to worrying about tomorrow. In other words, Peter put it this way, and he put it wisely. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. In other words, sometimes obeying the Lord's command, do not worry about tomorrow, requires action. And what we need to do is put it in to practice. We need to put it into practice and not worry about tomorrow. We need to put the scriptures into practice and remember that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do all things through Christ, not some things, but all things. If it didn't work out this year, I'm quite sure it will work out next year. Jesus teaches us to live in the presence of God each and every day. My brothers and sisters, the scripture tells us, the scripture tells us in Isaiah 41, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. These are some prerequisites that we can take into next year. Do not fear. Don't be scared. I am with you that God is with you. Emmanuel is with you. Don't be afraid. I will strengthen you. I will hold you up. My brothers and sisters, as long as we put God first in everything we do, I guarantee you it will be all right. I guarantee you that. My brothers and sisters, as I hasten to a close, as this year closes, I want to encourage you to remember the faithfulness of God. Jeremiah put it really well in Lamentations chapter 3. He stated that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In other words, that's why I love that hymn that we sing on Sunday morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning from thee. All that I have that your hand has provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. God has been faithful to you in 2022, and he will be faithful to you in 2023. You have nothing to fear next year. All you have is blessings upon blessings and God's favor upon favor upon you next, next year. Believe in the power of God, and I guarantee you, everything will be all right. Let us pray. God, I thank you for seeing us through the year 2022. You have blessed us. And we have come this far by faith, trusting and leaning on you, God, 
So God, we pray, dear God, we, that you will bless everyone over the live stream under the sound of this voice as we go in love, as we go in hope, as we go in joy, as we go in faith. Bless us, God, to be a blessing to all. Thank you, God, for allowing us to complete another year of your love. It's the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen and amen. My brother and sister, it has been a joy and wonderful thing to come before you over the live stream of this great church. I would like to thank God for our church leadership and all those people that has made possible. I thank God for you and your offering that you continue to submit to this church that made it possible to keep our lights on and to be able to keep the live stream going. I thank God for everyone that participated in this New Year's Eve service. Thank God for Dr. Darrell Pope for singing and leading worship on this New Year's Eve. But also thank God for the media ministry that it continues to help us stand the test of time. Thank God for our music ministry. Um, thank God for each and every one of them for what they have done throughout the year. Um, Dr. Austin and Brother Al and Brett, God, thank you for uh, the media ministry and Stephen and Yolanda and um, Danny and Dr. Polk. I thank God for the ushers like Maureen and Sister Joan Miller and um, the Vaughn family and Jimmy and Cecil and everybody that participate in this worship experience, I thank God for them as we continue to move forward. And remember, the pandemic can't hold no, us back as we continue to move forward. Looking forward to seeing your lovely faces in 2023. The church is open. Come on back and let's worship God together. God bless you. <laughs>